I want to talk today um, about literally like, you know, how I travel, what, I, what equipment I use, which is very uh, simple. I want to show you a little bit about the, the vision, how I approach these trips. And then I'm going to show something that I rarely show. I'm going to show you the uh, file as I captured it and then how I process it. And then show you how I did that. I got up this morning at 5 in the morning to, um, to update a presentation no one had ever seen. So, so file that under neurotic. <laughs> all right. It's like, that's just crazy. But anyway. All right. So um, I'm going to be showing you all the work that I do with a wide variety of uh, Sony cameras starting here in the U.S., down to Cuba. Then we'll go over to Europe and then into Africa. Now, the reason I started with Sony was a, uh, January of 2014 is before that, the Apple iPhone 4 came out. And it completely re-energized my photography. I was like, this is great. The quality is great. I literally took like 50,000 pictures with the Apple iPhone 4, all right? Um, which was great until I wanted to print them. And then it was, I'm going to use the term because Andrew Rodney said it, little shitty pictures. <laughs> OK? Um, and so that was a problem for me. So my husband was like, you do better with straightforward, simple equipment. I mean, half the stuff downstairs, it's like, it's just way too complicated. The less equipment I have in my hands and with me and in my bag, uh, the better pictures I get. Am I alone in that? Anybody else feel that? Yeah, right? I mean, <sighs> too many choices. So um, that's one reason I started with uh, Sony. I started with the A7R just because it was sort of like, OK, there's a dial on top. I can choose manual, aperture, shutter, program, or auto. You're done, which I thought was great. I also loved its uh, small size and how light they are. Um, because as I mentioned yesterday, my photographs kept getting closer and closer to the car. You know, because I just didn't. I was like, this is too heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, well, you, you know, you get older, and I couldn't keep abusing students to carry my equipment. So, we're starting here in, you know, in New York, New Jersey, New York, because I think it's a challenge. I think it's a challenge for everyone to um, photograph the familiar. You know, I would love to go to Egypt, you know, and photograph there and be like, wow, this is great. But every day when you're walking to work, you know, can do you take a different uh, street? Do you go a different avenue? Do you look at a different uh, venue? This is a Lincoln Center, um, the Flatiron Building. I didn't do that. OK. I do a lot of flipping, shooting into reflections. I mean, it's probably one of the most photographed buildings in the world. So it's a challenge to photograph in the city that is the most photographed city in the world. And after that, it's probably Paris. All right. So I'm always looking for these new relationships, OK, or trying to reinterpret the scene, just uh, you know, playing. And the reason I can play like this, especially something like this, is, I mean, with the Sonys, is that electronic viewfinder, all right? About when the first electronic viewfinders came out, they were like literally like watching like really bad TVs, right? You could see the interlacing. And you're like, ah, I'll never use electronic viewfinder. Now, they're such high quality, you don't see any of that interlacing. So I can actually see what I'm getting. So if I'm doing slow shutter, I see I got it versus I need to shoot 10 pictures with every different shutter speed. You know what I mean? So this is a classic picture of Central Park, right? But then this is go closer, try again. How can I reinterpret it? So it's literally the same day. It's probably about two minutes apart. I do not have a model release, so I wasn't going to get wet. OK, so same day. You know, I like to, you know, do more interpretation. So I do photograph people. You just don't recognize them. OK, and that's the great thing about New York. I mean, the great thing about New York, the ice skating rinks, these people just keep coming and going every time. So I was ready for them because I love this woman in the red dress. So I can entertain myself endlessly with a camera. And this is the best picture ever taken in the bus, the Port Authority. <laughs> literally, literally. And it's 10 o'clock. They're always there cleaning. I got it one day. And then I always say thank you to the guys. And they probably think I'm nuts. 
But I love the, come on, right? OK, you probably like your own pictures the most, but I love this picture. So that's with the little, the RX100, uh, because um, I literally have this camera with me everywhere I go. If I don't have it with me, you know, it's probably because I have the flu or something, because um, it shoots raw. And it's easier for me to literally turn on and shoot with than the iPhone. OK, I had a little time before a concert, so wander into Central Park. It is an advantage that I'm almost six feet tall. I was, grew up in New York in the 70s. When I'd walk through Central Park, people ran away from me. It was great, <laughs> literally. Um, I was so bad. I always mixed up the east side and the west side. I'm like, oh, I'm on the wrong side. So these are those new buildings going up on 9th, right by B&H. You know, just a, a pleasure to play. Um, this is definitely an opening scene for some movie with Cher, right? I can hear it. Um, so now we'll move into uh, Buffalo. Buffalo is a fabulous city, all right? I mean, there's a real renaissance going on in Buffalo. And there's these uh, grain silos there that are these huge lurking silos. And they're cleaning up the river. And they're building art centers here. And this is the picture that everybody takes. Because right across, there's a park. And there's a little railing. There's, they, all they need is the sign, like, take picture here. And so it's like, OK, I got that picture. But this picture shows the massiveness just as well for me, just by moving to the right a little bit. All right? So, you know, and the problem is, is I probably took like 40 pictures like this, and it's so hard. Which one's best? Which one's best? So, this sort of showing, addressing the idea of them cleaning up the river. There's the wildlife, the juxtaposition with the green against these silos, how important they are. Um, it was incredibly important for me to get that person to stand there. And I'm like, I am not a photojournalist. I move things. I have people move. I've never met a pixel I didn't want to change. So it's all fair. <laughs> all right? Now we're moving up into the Great Lakes region, very big lake, very small sailboat. OK? Um, and what's interesting is I try to interpret the Great Lakes. Of, I mean, they are more powerful than oceans, um, pretty amazing. And so. I like just going out and working on the interpretation, because just you know, in a way, photographing the horizon would be rather dull. And so I'm literally entertaining myself, like, oh, I don't know what to photograph today. I don't know, throw some rocks in. OK. <laughs> you know. So what's going to happen with digital? Oh, you don't like it, hit the delete key. You know, so, so a lot of rocks got sacrificed, <laughs> literally. The neighbors are used to me at 6 in the morning. Because I'm out there in like my bathrobe. And they're just like, there she is again. Um, they've offered me their rocks. <laughs> like, these rocks are good. All right? But what I love is, I love, we love going up to Lake Huron in the wintertime. Because there's no people. And there's no plastic furniture. OK? And um, it's, that's really, for me, the magical time. All right? I did these shots when I was like getting ready to go to Antarctica. I wanted to see if I could do it. You know, of course I could. Um, and how the camera would work, et cetera. So, you know, the graphics, the cold. The colder it gets, the more I'm going to be out there. Oh my gosh, I found the plastic furniture. <laughs> OK? So, I mean, literally, here too in New York, it's cold, we're getting out. Anybody can take pictures in the blue sky. Let's go where it's warmer. OK? And this is really, I've been to Cuba now three times. I'm going again at the, uh, in November. This is the, this trip was really the reason I switched to the, the Sony a7R. Because it was a small camera. Before that, I had like the Nikon. Back then, it was, like, I think, the D800. Oh my god, it weighs like two pounds without a lens. All right, and I knew I was going to be walking um, a lot. And I, I knew the streets were tight, and I was going to interact with people. And I didn't want that wall of Nikon equipment in front of me and the people. It was just the A7R. It was a 35 millimeter lens. And as many people know, it was a bright pink camera strap. Because I wanted to look like a tourist. And it worked. It completely let people relax. It let cars have conversations with one another. <laughs> and when you think Cuba, what do you think? You immediately think old cars, right? And I'm like, I'm not going to photograph the cars. I'm not going to photograph the cars. God, they're everywhere. <laughs> and so, so, you know, you have to sort of come up with a way, like, how can you photograph them with a little fun? So again, that electronic viewfinder, entertaining myself. You know, now I'm in the car that's moving, and here the car's driving by me. You know, just like panning, panning. Remember, and with film, oh my god, you'd burn so much film because you never know what you got. 
here, I'd be like, oh, I should probably go to a 15th of a second. I love it. I admit it. I love it. You know, and then using the cars to the motion to juxtapose, you know, with that, that architecture. I mean, it's literally like going back in time to the 50s. And my husband buys tripods and I leave them in the hotel room. Okay? I'm, so, I'm just not good. I went to RIT, literally. I graduated at the top of my class. Still don't like tripods. Um, but I can always find a lamp rail, a garbage can, something to lean up on. So what else do you think about in Cuba? Boxing, right? And I'm not like a sports shooter, so I want to sort of show the power, show the energy. This is a world-class gym where men and women train together. Um, it's, it's amazing. There's literally nothing here. There's just like a ring and some weights. And this is where the Olympic athletes train. So I played with the motion. I'm like, OK, I got the motion. Now let me play with the graphics. So move higher. And now freeze the action, really work with the shadows. Right, and the power. I just really enjoy that. So you, I enjoy looking at what people expect a little differently. So this is literally where boxing starts. Isn't that amazing? Look at the form on that little kid. I mean, that's just amazing. What else do I think about Cuba? Well, I think about music. So if I ever need Frank Sinatra and Louis Armstrong records, I know where to get them, right? But keep going with the music, and you go down the Malacan, there's people just playing down there. And I love how the shallow depth of field let me make those uh, lights into like little musical notes, OK? You have to walk around at night to see how people are socializing, the work. So this coming out, it's raining, came out, had the RX100 with me. 5,000 ISO, click, done. And the atmosphere is really, really fabulous. Another thing you might not know about Cuba is the graffiti is stunning. A lot of it is political, but this is the classic, find an interesting background and then stand still. All right, so I literally just waited, and her walking into that light was like, got it. You know, which I thought, well, I like it. Same thing here. I'm just going to wait. The milk carton is a symbol for missing children. Right, we put, remember? So uh, just waited for her to come in. I'm not sure what eating the heart is, but it's sort of gruesome. OK, so I'm walking around early in the morning, completely safe, one camera, one Sony with me. When I'm traveling down there, I just use a hand strap. I don't even want that big strap around me. It looks sort of touristy. Just want, you know, the hand strap, hold it, shoot. Silent mode, amazing. OK, so here, I'm taking a picture of the graffiti, you think. Uh, zoom out. That was really the shot I wanted. Okay, so I sort of, I have to admit, I sort of faked them out. But I do, I just love the, the figures and the composition in this. There's a lot of color in Cuba. People love the color. You can do this all day long. And it was like, I couldn't have asked the woman in yellow walk by. This is not Photoshop. Nobody trusts my pictures once they see my processing, right? I mean, this, could, this looks like it could be in Mexico. I mean, it's just amazing. It's like, we have yellow paint, but it's only going to reach that far. <laughs> right? I, I love it. OK? More color, shoot, 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 enhance. Now, personally, I would never go to Cuba to go shopping. Right? <laughs> there, I mean, well, I like, I'm a vegetarian. I can eat the fruit and the vegetables. But you know, that's not really why you would go. And it's, there's uh, different economies. It's really, really interesting. And everything's out on the street. That cash rate, that scale should literally be in a museum. But look how well taken care of it is. It's painted. Make it beautiful just with a simple sunflower. There's a tremendous pride there, which I really, really like. It's very easy to be seduced by the texture and the crumbling, et cetera. Um, in a way, you, know, you photograph it, but I didn't try to get completely overwhelmed with it. And this is literally what people will do. If a building's fall apart, they will go in and find the individual bricks to reuse them. You know, and then I'm thinking, and I complain when I miss the subway. That there's bigger issues than I have to wait five minutes for a subway. It's pretty uh, humbling. So I move around a lot, got the pano, and then move in closer. 
So it's probably about 10 shots, because here was the background, there was the phone booth, and I had to literally wait for their gesture to be right. So we've got this, these two here, and these two men here, and then these two chairs. I mean, literally, that's, those chairs are amazing if they could tell stories. Now, my Spanish is, um, don't, no, don't ask. I speak German fluently. It didn't help that much. Um, so, and I was a little shy, hard for you to imagine. So I asked people to photograph their hands because that helped me approach them and I got that sentence down. And so they thought I was sort of nuts, but they went along with it. So the hand of a gardener, the same hands. And let me sort of make a connection with people. All right, like I love the little X on the finger and the, the tattoo. And then, I mean, look at the life in, in those hands. It's amazing. And so when I'm, when I'm in a new country or somewhere, I try to think of these little projects. Like, you know, how do I photograph the cars differently? Let me do the hands, okay? Um, this is a woman, she's the best female boxer in Cuba, all right? Um, this is literally how they'll make baseballs to play with. They'll find a rock and some tape and tape it up. You know, so you show up with some baseballs, you're like, you're very popular. But that's how they'll, they'll uh, play. So you've got to think, I'm using that smaller camera. I'm a lot closer. I, I can't stand that, like, oh, I've got my 30 millimeter lens. I'm going to photograph homeless people. No, go across the street and have a conversation. That was, I just sort of had a critique with my student about that. OK, wandering in and out. Still finding these, uh, you know, symbols. Now Cuba is all about transition, and so I really started thinking about transition. How can you photograph a transition? And so you can start thinking a little bit more abstractly. That I felt like there's a transition here, something that's, you know, trying to hold this tree in, but the tree is still coming out, and and how this water is is moving over this old barrier at the Malacan. And I've been there dozens of times. I've never been able to take this picture again. So it's always good to take the picture. Um, and I found this uh, church, beautiful ceiling. And I shouldn't move away from here. This middle one here, that's a memorial to 9-11, uh, which is all about the brotherhood in the morning of that day, which I thought was pretty amazing. So now we're going to move further south. I forgot to have Chile in my uh, titles. and. Uh, um, we're down now in, uh, in Chile, and I always love this, because if one poster's good, 80's got to be better, <laughs> you know? So I think that's just great. And I will go to the tourist places to challenge myself, how can I photograph this a little differently? You know, because everybody's going to do the selfie and do the front, but I really want to sort of show what this religious icon is all about. Wanted to go to the Antarctic, and we talked our way into the shipyard. And these boats are so big, I couldn't really capture their hugeness. And so rather than getting upset, you know, like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I decided to concentrate on the details because all this wear and tear is, is showing all the, um, the wharfs and the piers that this, or the ice that this boat ran through. Either that or I'm just making stuff up to entertain myself. But I'll, I'll go along with it. You know, these just hulks are just lying on, well, being, have been rammed into the beach. And of course, you know, when you're seeing these oil tankers, I end up uh, thinking a lot about the environment. And if it's dead, I will photograph it. Oh, no, literally. I have other examples. That would be a different talk. The, the cemetery dead talk. All right. So now we're into Germany. And I go to Germany quite often. My, uh, my family's still over there, so... When my parents were alive, I would go over like three or four times a year. And damn, if it doesn't rain every, every time I'm there. And so, but it doesn't matter because I have the little RX100 with me to go hiking. And I love photographing when you think you, should, you don't have the light. There's always light, all right? So when I'm working with that smaller sensor camera, it's about a one inch sensor, I, I do think more graphical. I think simpler. I think more design. And so another example of a, um, a flip. 
What I love about this little camera, even though it's a one inch sensor, is you can shoot an aperture priority and actually push that, I'm not doing that, push that background back. And I was hiking with my brother and he's like, did you see the little water droplets? And I was like, of course not. So, so I went back and then photographed it and took the credit. Okay. So, okay. All right. So the same thing with aperture priority. God, people must think I'm totally depressed. Yeah. Yeah, it's dead. Let's photograph it. The people they've, in Germany in this little village, they ignore me now, too. Like, there she is again, photographing our dead garden. OK. Um, but I like, the, um, I like showing what I feel could be overlooked. All right? So it's not all uh, grayness. So going hiking, once again, with the little camera. I'm constantly photographing these sheds, like meeting this guy once in a while. You know, it's like I got to, you know, what, go to the wide angle and try it. But even when I'm traveling, lots of times I will um, set up some little still lives if the light's good. And you know, ah, oh, the light's good. Grab whatever you can. That is a little more saturated than it should be. You know, it can also tell a story. Or I can find family artifacts and literally set them up. Or what I do lots of times um, in my parents' house is uh, I go in the attic because I need like two hours by myself. What is she doing up there? Oh, she's taking pictures um, and just setting things up up there. So now we're going to move into Africa. And I had the good fortune in August to uh, go to Zimbabwe because the School of Visual Arts Computer Art Program was working with a design school uh, in Zimbabwe to uh, support them with some equipment, software, and expertise. So of course they needed a photographer to document the trip. Well, they did. Um, so I talked my way into that. So this is as soon as we got off the plane, get out, get fresh air, and um, just sort of wandering around. So I like adding a little mystery to the images. Now I'm getting a little closer so I can sort of see what, what people are doing. And it's literally they're playing checkers with uh, bottle caps. All right, And if I pull back, you'll get the whole story that they're taxi drivers on a break. But I sort of like not telling you everything. Usually I don't even show that image because it's like, oh. All right, so you can, I literally circled around. This is the first thing I took, and then I went and, uh, closer. So I had the good fortune to uh, go visit the World Heritage Site called the Great Zimbabwe, which is actually where Zimbabwe got its name, um, up before sunrise. Now this is all with the Sony A7R2, because when I'm traveling to these places where I'm never going to go back again, and I want the highest quality, I'll get out the uh, larger sensor camera. All right. Now this is a World Heritage Site where they literally built, a, in a way, a holy city into a mountain without any concrete. Every rock has been perfectly um, formed to fit into these pathways. And all these walls were built, of course, by hand um, without any mortar. And when the British came into uh, what then was turned into Rhodesia, they spent literally, they kept bringing in expert after expert after expert to prove that the Africans could have never built this. It was sort of like, what, aliens came down? And so it's, uh, yes, the people from Zimbabwe actually built it like about 800 years ago. Isn't this amazing? And, and here's your sense of scale. Uh, we're like way, way up. It's good to stay in shape. And then we're going to go down to that other stone structure in the background. And so what's great about this is um, this is a World Heritage Site that like nobody goes to. So I would highly recommend it. But here I'm like trying to play. Once you photograph big stone walls, you're like, OK, what do I do now? You know, there's another two hours here. And you sort of have to like do something, right? So start playing with you know, how the light's coming through. So try, I love shooting right into the light with these Sonys because they can handle it. There's no flare here. I mean, that ugly, you know, where you see the actual the, um, the aperture. And it's just like, I don't know, I'll try it. 
you know, it's handheld. Remember where the tripod is? It's at the hotel room. Trying to play with uh, the contrast of the fleeting shadow and that stone that's been there for 800 years. You know, going to a market, and these women probably thought I was nuts because I bought like five of those bags. I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen. Okay? There's a lot of driving. It's a long trip, so I'm just entertaining myself with slow shutter. Now, of course, if you're going to go to, you know, Africa or Zimbabwe, you want to see the animals. And so, you know, I, I'm not a wildlife photographer, but, you know, I was a little scared when we sort of stumbled on this guy. He's like, I was sort of like thinking, you know, we can see you, <laughs> you know. But uh, so th that's really exciting. And we're by a river, and this whole group of elephants comes down. And these parks, these bigger parks, you know, wildlife is protected. And a lot of these parks have been no hunting for 40 years. So it was like the Garden of Eden. I know they're wild, and I'm not going to do anything. but. You know, they went right across the river, and then like any good child, I need to play in the mud. And just like play in the mud. And there's the mother in the background. And it was sort of reminded me of my mother when I go swimming. She's like, come, we have to go home. We have to come home. And be like, no, one more dive. You know, and I probably irritated her just as much as that little baby elf had irritated the mother, and she just decided to leave. And of course, the little guy followed. So this is, of course, with the A7R2 with the 70 to 200. Um, lens on it, just uh, exploring. And then well, the sun had been gone way, way down. It was practically dark. And uh, there were some rhinoceroses. And it's literally, I mean, it's sort of like mini-me. I mean, th that is a face only a mother could love, <laughs> you know? And you see this, and, you're, and you, I mean, you wonder about poaching and why and all that, and it's like, I don't understand it. I understand it's a financial issue. Then we drive some more, OK? So I'm going to try to find the abandoned, the quiet, the less common. You know, the people that are uh, driving with me, I'm always like, stop, stop. I had to photograph another sign. I, I'm not showing this. I was in Russia. Every time I saw a cemetery, I told the guy, I have to stop. And after like the fifth cemetery, he was like, you're a necrophiliac, aren't you? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, that man studied Latin. <laughs> but it's like, no, I'm not. But I'm, I'm intrigued by how different cultures handle family, heritage, and death. Right? And the cemeteries are great. Nobody talks back to you. So here I am wandering around. I'm always the one furthest away from, from the car, from the trail. Everybody's always waiting. And you never know where you're going to find a picture. I mean, there's, I love this. You know, the, the, the design, the composition, the color. It's fabulous. Now, Zimbabwe, is, um, because the government had, has gone through great economic um, hardship. And when we were there, they didn't have their own currency. They used US dollars. And the only US dollars they ever got were the dollars people brought in. So these dollars, you know, a normal dollar bill says to last about 18 months. I mean, this thing was so soft, there was no fiber left to it. You'd hold it up, and it was just like droop. And I loved it. I was like, this is so cool. OK? And so whenever I went shopping, I always asked for change for the oldest money you have. Of course, people thought I was nuts. So I did these still lives at the hotel on the table with a piece of office paper from the front desk. And you might not know it, but um, I think in Photoshop 6, Adobe put in anti-counterfeit control uh, protection in uh, their scanning software and in Camera Raw. Don't go home and try it, but no, you can't acquire American <coughs> money because it's built. And people are like really upset. Oh, Adobe and the government. And I'm like, yeah, counterfeit's <laughs> really great, right? Um, Camera Raw had no problem with this. Open it, fine, because it didn't even recognize it as money. That's how bad it was. I brought them home. There's probably some interesting like viruses in there. OK? Don't forget to enjoy once in a while. And so I showed this yesterday. I'm going to show it real quick, and then we'll get to some of the processing. Um, the ability to shoot high quality in, like this is a, the back market of a market where these people are building the marimbas, this little thumb. Um, instruments, 
all right? And so I'm shooting. It's, I don't feel like it's intimidating. I don't want to show up in a place like this with like, here, I've got four or $5,000 worth of equipment. Aren't I great? Oh, that's so arrogant. And so just the little camera working right over shoulder. There's other people talking to him. Some people were doing some audio recordings. Um, it was just pretty amazing, the texture. It's like, yeah, I have a feeling that uh, American regulations might have a problem with this power plug. Okay, but it's like right, right there, open. they're having a drought. Don't worry, it's not going to rain for another year. So it's just out there. Um, they're creating these little statues out of stone. And so, like this gentleman, I asked him to come inside because it was so bright outside so I could photograph him. Just a little camera. Um, so you see how they're trying to protect themselves from the dust. And everything is literally that white. This isn't processing. It's like everything's covered in dust. And that little camera just helped me like communicate. Like if you do portraiture or fashion, you know, you'll use like a, a 200, maybe a 300 millimeter lens and you're, it's like hard to communicate with the model. So obviously I didn't want that, that look or that feel. So if you look at this picture that my husband took, it's sort of interesting. You don't even see the camera in my hand. Obviously I'm photographing. I mean, what else would I be doing in that weird position, <laughs> right? Um, but I think that just really helped them sort of be, people be relaxed instead of like here's some, you know, super rich person like taking these pictures. Anyway, that's sort of me. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.